Hey, and welcome to an episode of Art Source, where we'll be reviewing a variety of art products, including techniques and tips for application. Today, we're going to be working with wet media, um, landscapes, and particularly our focus feature product is going to be Daler Rowney acrylic inks. And so these are already liquefied, really highly intense pigment that are ready to roll and can be used as any water media or used for the effects of watercolor. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to be using a substrate, which is going to be the Friedrichs Archival Watercolor Canvas Board. And what it is, is it is actually a rigid panel that is firm, and it is a canvas, a watercolor canvas that is applied. And it actually has to be unlocked by moistening, but it can hold a lot of uh, repetitive uh, media. So we're going to be using that today. Now, if you'd like to follow for more tips or even sign up for workshops, uh, you can go to the website at www.micagogan.com or you can find us on Facebook at Micah Gogan Art or you can follow on Instagram at Micah Gogan Art. So this was an actual workshop on wet landscape medias uh, that were created um, in, uh, just a few weeks ago. And so uh, this is the majority of the surface has already been worked on just showing you how you can do thin translucent layers um, and use the, the water media and the effects of watercolors. So with the Friedrichs canvas, whether you're starting fresh or whether you're adding to an existing layer, you have to unlock the layer. And what that means is that you're gonna wanna moisten it in some fashion, and I'm gonna choose to give it a little spritz from just a typical um, little 99 cent spray water bottle. But before I get started with that, I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm gonna fold it long ways to create a little bit of a uh, kind of a drop cloth for any of my moisture. And I'm gonna place it on my uh, easel just so that I can have a little bit more of the setup. And I've already put out a variety of the Daler Rowney colors. And so like I said, they come in some solid colors if you prefer to mix. And this is the process yellow that I'm gonna be using. And then they come in two different sizes. You can buy the large containers and save, um, or you can buy little um, drop bottles which come with these really efficient squeeze bottle droppers so that you can uh, apply the color that way. Now from the large bottles, you can either pour or you can buy the dropper singular. I found some at a local craft store. The colors I'm gonna be using today, again, are process yellow. I'm gonna use a little bit of process blue and I'm gonna use um, some, also some flame red to conclude my primary color scheme. Now, the flame red was originally in a large bottle like this, and as I used up a traditional color, I just rinsed out the bottle and then filled it with the flame red so that I could repurpose the bottle. So that's a great way to kind of recycle and use those droppers. And then just for an added layer of interest, I'm gonna use a pearlescent. The FW makes a pearlescent line with just a touch of shimmer. And I'm gonna add the waterfall green just for a little bit of added interest. So um, those are gonna be the color schemes I'm working with. So again, it's process yellow, flame red, Prussian blue, and a little bit of waterfall green. I'm gonna be using the Pro Stroke Power Quill brushes for this. And just for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna be using a number six flat. And so, uh, again, whenever we're working with the Friedrichs watercolor canvas, it has to be remoistened to activate the layers. And you can do that with a simple wet brush application. So the brush can be wet and moistened and it can be applied as such, and that will unlock the layers. Or you can just take the spray bottle as mentioned before and just give it a little spray. So that's what we're gonna do just for you know fast application. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there. And I'm also gonna spray the glass palette that I have beforehand with the same bottle just to kind of moisten the surface and that'll keep the, the layers activated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, you can see that this has already been worked, but I'm just gonna show you a couple of application layers and how you can go a little bit deeper. And so um, I am going to start off with a little bit of the Prussian blue, and because the pigment is so rich and intense, I'm gonna dull it down by adding just a small percentage of the flame red, just to kind of neutralize that color. And that's gonna help dull the blue down so that it becomes more like a ultramarine. Okay, and let me show you what that looks like on the on paper towel here. Cause, so that is kind of a dulled ultramarine color. And then just to show you, this is what a um, the Prussian blue by itself looks like. 
So let's moisten that up. See how much more intense the pigment is by itself. Um, so I've just added a small touch of the flame red and it dulls it down to give me this ultramarine type color. And I'm going to use a thin wash and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue the cycle here and what I want to do is silhouette or create like a enclosed so that I can bring, I've got this large patch of white bright area and I want to kind of neutralize that down and I want to draw the viewer to um, more of the boat which is the subject matter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put more of that neutral color I'm going to mix some up real quick here and just create more of a thin layer of the ultramarine type color and draw the viewer back up to the boats which are the subject matter and I'm just brushing some thin applications and as you can see my brush strokes are visible to begin with but then they start to um, absorb in where I had moistened the canvas but now that we've got more closure on that white space we've begun to block it in so that it's not so bright then now my attention's going back up to the boats so I'm going to continue to add some layers with that and if you feel like your brush strokes are too hard, so let's put something a little bit firmer down. I'm going to put more intense straight up pigment on the canvas. I'm going to go just a little bit darker on purpose and say, whoa, that's just way too dark. That's not what I wanted at all. Well, you can just pull out your water bottle or your moistened brush, whatever the choice may be, and you can spray. Wow, look at that, right? You can just have it to uh, streak down to create more of that watery look and then you can even go back with your brush and readjust applying more color. So it's a really great open surface and you can also do this with a variety of um, the Lockwell Rail uh, Canson Heritage papers. Uh, I prefer the 300 pound, it holds a lot of moisture and so you can just continue to work the effects. So see how we have that nice, dreamy, drippy watercolor effect? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my waterfall green because we already have such a nice translucent sheen of it. And I'm going to add it for that extra layer of interest. I'm going to put just a little bit of the waterfall green to help drag that color scheme. And I, I'm just loving the drips. I'm just going to allow those to just come through and continue. All right, and I'm just again building on what's already there. Now the canvas has been unlocked or opened, so I can even build on the existing features that were already there. And I'm gonna take just a little bit more of the waterfall green. I'm shaking it up. You always wanna give the bottles a little shake and make sure the lids are on for sure, because that can create a mess. I've totally done that before. And I'm going to put a little bit of this waterfall green and I apologize, you can't see my palette, but with it being liquefied, I couldn't really do a vertical version like I can with the paint. But I'm just gonna get a nice, beautiful drip. And I'm just mixing a little bit of the waterfall green in with the Prussian blue so that I can get, you know, some variation of both colors. Wow, look at that. And I can literally see the shimmer as it drips down the canvas and I just create the fluid strokes and I'm going to put just another fresh gloss up here just to kind of show the translucency and the depth of that water. I'm going to create a little bit of shading, darker shading around the actual boats, you know, because oftentimes the solid mass would be reflecting. Water is always dense, it reflects the sky, so typical um, a rule of thumb for water and sky is as above so below but the water is always at least a value notch darker than the sky okay now one more little thing I'm going to show you is we're going to deepen some of the outlines of the brown especially some of the pale versions back here now you can of course buy premixed colors but I don't know if you um, were aware that you can premix and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the flame red the processed yellow and a little touch of the Prussian blue and I'm going to get my own homemade brown 
okay? And, and as I've got that brown, I'm just gonna touch on the edge. And now this has been lightly sprayed, but once the uh, effect dries, then I can go in for more crisp, solid lines like I'm doing now. So I can just kind of outline the effect of the boat to make it stand out a little bit more. And I'm just gonna drag that down slightly. Now let's say, oh my gosh, that's too dark. I just wanted it a little bit lighter. You can always take a moist paper towel or a dry paper towel. Either will work fine and just press lightly and pull the value back up to the level that you're looking for. And then you can go back in and work with just a you know, direct application of the media. I'm going to just crisp up the edge here for more of a straight line. See if I can go a little bit darker here. Okay, so that way I've got just a little hint of blue there. Now one final thing I'm going to do is deepen some of the recessions here just by putting a light Prussian blue with a small tinge of yellow. And I'm just going to just glaze over some of this just to create a little bit more um, of the atmospheric perspective and just give me a little bit more depth in the background with the greens. So you can just create these light tickles or glaze layers and just let those dry brush strokes show. So see the, the brush strokes and how it's just showing the separation of the bristles and you can let some of that be exposed as you play and build layers. So I hope that you got a lot of value out of this little how-to snippet video. Um, if you'd like to find more workshops or applications in the area, then again, feel free to check out the sources, the website, Facebook, or Instagram. And I hope you'll find some FW inks at your local store and give them a try, whether it be watercolor paper or watercolor canvas. So um, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Art Source and stay tuned for more.